Our entry to the EngComp 100 Engineering Contest is a Minesweeper solver. Essentially, the goal is to solve the game of Minesweeper deterministically as efficiently as possible. Over the course of the competition, our program has undergone continuous evolution. From weeks 1 to 3, we laid the building blocks for our program, and from weeks 4 to 7, we continued to perfect, optimize, and cover the corner cases that we did not anticipate earlier. The game of Minesweeper is composed of three elements, the unknowns, the hints, and the mines. In this example, we can look at this hint of three, which indicates that there are three mines in this vicinity. Since it is touching only three unknowns, we know that these are all mines. Furthermore, we can look at this hint of one, which is already touching a mine marked by a flag. Since this requirement is already met, all of the other unknowns in this vicinity can be cleared. One important thing to note is that in the game of Minesweeper there are often unsolvable positions. In this example, we do not have enough information to take any deterministic action. One of the important challenges of this project was to bridge the gap between the way we would intuitively solve a Minesweeper puzzle and creating an algorithm which a computer could use. This process is easy for the trivial cases, however Minesweeper often introduces complex scenarios. In the following position, we can infer from this too that there is at least one mine in the orange box. Despite not knowing where the mine is in this orange box, we can see that it will satisfy the condition for this one, which allows us to clear the other three adjacent unknowns. In order to solve more complex positions, we must introduce a coordinate system. Here we can see a traditional Cartesian coordinate system, which we unroll in order to assign each cell its own unique ID. We will now explain the algorithm behind trivial solving. In this example, the program inspects each cell around the three. Since the hint minus the number of mines equals the number of unknowns, one, we know that each unknown is a mine. In general, if the hint number minus the number of surrounding bombs equals the number of unknowns, we know that those unknowns are bombs. To solve more complicated states, we build a system of linear equations and solve them. To produce the equations, the algorithm goes through each hint. In this example, we start off with the number 2. It is adjacent to two unknowns and produces an equation with two variables. Next we go to the 2. This 2 is adjacent to four unknowns and the sum is equal to 2. The following equation is produced. Finally, we go to the 1. This is adjacent to one unknown. The following equation is produced. After row reducing the aforementioned equations, we obtain a matrix of the following form. Each column represents one cell. Contrary to normal reductions, we can solve equations with many free variables. This is because a variable representing a cell can only be one of two values. Either it is not a mine, equal to zero, or is a mine, equal to one. Taking this into consideration, we can see in the second equation that the only way to obtain a total of zero is if all the variables of coefficient one are equal to zero. In other words, they are all not mines. Our second and final heuristic is to check if the number of ones is equal to the constant. To satisfy the equation, they are mines regardless of other coefficients. Conversely, the remaining negative coefficients must not be mines. In this case, the one is a mine and the remaining negative terms must not be mines. Now, our program in action. This is in real time. To optimize our program, we explored many techniques. Here are some of the more significant ones. Our first technique is solved masking. In this run, the program must create equations for each hint for each iteration of the loop. To curb this effect, we introduce a technique whereby solved subsections are ignored. FRF, an open source program under the BSD license, offers an alternative to RF but is hundreds of times faster. In general, the MATLAB profiler was an invaluable tool to identify the effectiveness of our optimizations. It can be found under the run pane under run in time. The profiler details the runtimes of individual functions during execution. In this side-by-side -side comparison, we can see the dramatic time savings of FRF. To produce these results, we solve the same field twice, once using regular RF and once using the FRF. Due to some randomization in our solving procedure, the function calls are not exactly the same, however the difference is clear.